we honor you for being so perfect in all your way. Our worship this morning is directed at you because you alone are worthy, worthy of all our worship. And so we pour our hearts out to you in song as we give you thanks and praise for being who you are. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. You are worthy, Lord, yes. now and forevermore. Yes, Father. Amen. 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 Before you take a seat, just wave at somebody, say hello through the masks. Hopefully they hear you. Now this morning what we're going to be doing is we're going to be breaking bread together. Uh, And as we break bread together, we want to invite everyone to take part with us, right? Whether you're sitting here uh, in the church auditorium, whether you're in the hall, right? Wave at everybody in the hall, yes. Everybody in the hall, wave back at us, right? Thank you. Uh, Just join in with us this morning. For those who are online, 
you're also welcome to join in as long as uh, you've got a couple of seconds now to get there, get all the ingredients ready. Right now, if there's anybody here in the auditorium or in the hall that does not yet have one of these little communion cups, raise a hand now so they can bring one to you. Anyone? Right, everybody got? Okay. So, what we're going to do this morning is I'm going to read a short scripture and then we're going to take the bread out of this cup and we're going to hold on to it so that we can all eat it together. One body together, right? So, go ahead now as I read the scripture, take that transparent film off and make sure you've got the bread. So, the scripture I'm reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 to 28 from the Message Bible. During the meal, Jesus took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And then taking the cup and thanking God, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood. God's new covenant poured out for many people for the forgiveness of sins. And so, as you have this bread, Father, we thank you for this bread, a sign of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was broken for us, given so that as we partake, as we eat of this bread, we show unity with him, unity with, with each other. It's a symbol of our life eternal with you and healing that comes through your broken body. In Jesus' name. Let's eat the bread together. And then the juice. Father, thank you that this juice that we drink together is a sign of the new covenant. The covenant that you created for the forgiveness of sins for your children. Thank you that as family we do this together. The blood of Christ. And so, Father, thank you. Thank you for the symbol. Thank you for the sign. Thank you for, the rem for this breaking of bread which helps us to remember and reflect on and live out everything that Jesus did for us. Amen. Why don't you turn your attention to the screens, please, uh, as we watch the announcements this morning. I don't know about you, but I'm really grateful that spring is in the air. Mm? Right? Don't you enjoy the when you walked out this morning? Didn't you smell the rain? It's coming. Right? And we're really looking forward to that time when uh, the rain is in the air again. Yes, Lord. Uh, we we need the dust and the pollen and everything else to just settle down. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well. This morning we are just so grateful to see so many faces here. I want to say welcome to everyone who's joining in with us today. Those that are here in the church building, those that are in the hall, 
All right, because in the hall we have additional seating where folk can still fellowship together. Uh, those that are in their homes here in Centurion, what about, uh, we've got folk watching from the UK, folk watching from the US of A and Canada, folk watching from Australia and New Zealand, right? Sounds to me like it's becoming Centurion Vineyard International. <laughs> no, joke, joke. Uh, but we really are blessed that everybody is here today, that you're taking part with us, not only physically, but also online. So we're going to have a good time this morning. Well, this morning we're continuing with our series of Jesus and victory over the world. Right, I'm oh, sorry, we're continuing with our series on John's Gospel, and our subject this, this morning is Jesus and victory over the world. We're going to be reading from John chapter 16, verses 25 to 33. And we pray, I pray that... God would take this word and reveal the truth of the word to our hearts this morning. Lord, would I be able to speak the truth, that we would hear the truth. And Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence, that you are here leading us into truth. Would you help us, Lord, to hear that truth? Amen. So let's read the scriptures together from John chapter 16, verses 25 to 33. I have spoken of these matters, and the matters that Jesus is talking about is as he was preparing his disciples to leave, that he was going to leave the earth. But I have spoken of these matters in figures of speech, but soon I will stop speaking figuratively and will tell you plainly all about the Father. Then you will ask in my name, I, will, I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you dearly because you love me and, and believe that I came from God. Yes, I came from the Father into the world, and now I leave the world and return to the Father. Then his disciples said, At last you are speaking plainly and not figuratively. Now we understand that you know everything, and there's no need to question you. From this, we believe that you came from God. And Jesus asked, do you finally believe? But the time is coming. Indeed, it's here now when you will be scattered, each one of you going his own way, leaving me alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. I've told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. You know, that word overcome is what caught my attention the first time I read through these verses. And that word overcome means Jesus is saying he has subdued the world. He's got to that place where he's conquered the world. He's triumphed over all the trials and sorrows that are in the world. He has the victory in the world. And this final verse is, is really where we're going to focus our attention this morning. Uh, I want us to, to see how it is that we can have peace in Jesus. And what does it mean for us when the scriptures say Jesus has overcome the world? We're going to try and answer those two questions. Now this discussion between Jesus and his disciples, it, it takes place towards the end of Jesus' ministry here on earth. He's, he's getting ready uh, to leave, as I said earlier, but this is just before he went through the betrayal and those Trials, those unjust trials that he suffered through, and then crucifixion and even death. And what he's saying to them is, despite all the disappointments and troubles, all the, the trials and sorrows and the fighting and the struggle that you're going to go through, you will have peace. But you see, they were also encouraged when Jesus said that they would hear everything in plain speech, talking normal English. 
No, not at all. Uh, but talking in clear language that everybody understood. This is the work of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, who will guide us into all truth, says the Scriptures. This is the Holy Spirit who comes in us, who, who dwells in us, who helps us to understand what Jesus means when he says, I have overcome the world. Uh, uh, Holy Spirit who hasn't stopped helping us even till today. And he, even today, he guides us into all truth. So let's rely on him to be guided into truth this morning. You know, when life is at that place where it feels like every bit of energy, every bit of, of, of health and goodwill and positive attitudes that we have, where everything feels like it's being squeezed out of us. Jesus says, be encouraged. The battle has already been won. Right? The passage that we were reading today reads, Jesus said, you may have peace. Take heart, be courageous. Because when we feel we're at that place, where we cannot continue with that struggle that we've, that, that's been holding on to us, that, that we've been experiencing for days and weeks and months or years. That struggle, Jesus says, take heart. If any one of us are experiencing life like that at the moment, take heart, he says. Be courageous. Because no matter what's happening in the world today, in Jesus, we can have peace. Yeah, that seems like an outrageous statement to make. Especially these days. You know, unemployment is a world leader in South Africa at the moment. We're sitting at 34.4%. And that means one out of every three people you see cannot afford to buy food, clothing, or a place to stay. So look at the people next to you. Right? One of them just maybe cannot afford to buy food today. What about COVID infections? They're still high. Right? Now there's even talk of a fourth wave coming uh, in two or three months' time. And more than that, they've now discovered another variant in South Africa. And we can have peace? Doesn't sound right, does it? But hear what Jesus says to everyone who follows him. In John 14, verse 27, peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the world does. You know how the world gives peace? How the world gives? He, the world gives expecting payment in return. Right? The world always expects something is coming back to them. Jesus continues to say, do not be worried, do not be upset, do not be afraid. We're at the place where we believe Jesus enough to save us from hell. But why, do we, why do we find it so hard? Why do we find it so hard to believe and accept? His gift of peace. We're going to change mics. <clears throat> you see, Jesus wants us to live a life that is free from worry. It's free from stress. It's free from anxiety and, and fear. And instead... He wants us to be filled with his peace, his love, his joy, and his hope. So if you're struggling right at this moment in time with no peace, there's a way to get peace. There's a way to, to be filled with the peace that Jesus gives, and that is really to talk to God about it. Talk to God about your troubles, what is causing you to be upset. Expect 
that God is going to hear and answer your prayers because the result is peace. Even better is to ask another person to pray with you. And as soon as you do that, it helps to just lighten the burdens you're carrying. And they come alongside you and they encourage you and they help you to be brave and strong and courageous not to give up. Despite the issues we're facing. We're facing. Because you see, as soon as we get to that place where we realize that we are overcomers, then we can live constantly, each and every day, in peace. Well, from our text today, one of the things that we saw is Jesus is an overcomer. Right? We saw that, remember, uh, in verse 33, he says, I have overcome the world. And that means that what he did was he conquered uh, sin and he conquered death and he conquered Satan. We see this in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 where Jesus overcame sin by living a sinless life despite being tempted. The Hebrews says, on the contrary, we have a high priest who is Jesus who was tempted in every way but did not sin. He overcame death by being raised from the dead. And in Revelation 1.18, Jesus says, I am the living one. I was dead, but now I'm alive forevermore. And I have authority over death and the world of the dead. And in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, Jesus overcame Satan and all the supernatural powers of evil. He says, because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power over death and ensure that we could have life forever in God's presence. That's the promise. Uh, that's what Jesus did. But how does it apply to you and me today? I believe John explains this in his letter in 1 John 4 verses 4 to 5. Every child of God overcomes the world. For our faith is the victorious power that triumphs over the world. So who are the world conquerors defeating its power? Those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. So who is a child of God? I am. Anybody else? Right? We have overcome the world. We are world conquerors. That's truth in plain English. We are fully equipped, fully empowered to deal with and withstand every attack from the enemy. We don't need anything else. Now you see, unfortunately what happens is the most common attack that we get from Satan these days is fear and anxiety. It's worry about what's going to happen for the future. As God's children, we can overcome these attacks. In John 4, 18, uh, it says, there is no fear in love because perfect love drives out all fear. See that little word, all? That means... Nothing has been left behind for us to find something to fear. Is it perhaps fear of COVID? Right? Catching the, the, the virus? Well, victory is ours because God is our healer. Amen. He's our rock. He's our shelter. He's who we turn to when we're facing trouble. We don't have to struggle through anything alone. Now, of course, we still obey the rules of the government because we know. But even though we obey the government rules, we know that we know that we know we do not have to fear this disease. Amen. Perhaps there's fear of the future. You know, Jeremiah promises us that God knows the plans that he has for us for good and to bring about the future that we trust him for. God knows the plans for us. So why do we fear our future? 
Perhaps it's fear of unemployment. And yet the one thing that we know is God is our provider. And so this fear has already been conquered. Fear of death. Jesus defeated death already. And he is the first example of resurrection for us in his glorified body. You know, it's even more than that. Jesus promises us that he's going to his father's house to prepare a room for us. In John 14 verse 2. So there's nothing left to fear. Instead, we can live in peace, the peace that Jesus gives, the peace that comes after victory. And yet, we still get concerned for other people. We still care for them. And, and in that concern and that, that caring for them, we get to that place where we wind ourselves up so much that we worry about them. And that worry turns into anxiety. And that worry and anxiety grows into fear. Because we don't know what's going to happen in the future. But there is a better way. There's a better way of handling it. Jesus says in John 14 verse 1, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. That word troubled can also be getting agitated or nervous or frantic or distressed. You see, we get this way. We, we get agitated, we get nervous, we get distressed and frantic when Satan convinces us that the problem we're facing right at this moment in time is bigger than God is. You know, we're making like, like an ostrich, you know, an ostrich buries its head in the sand. We're making like an ostrich and burying our head in the, pro in the problem. And to us it appears that God has gone missing. But we know he hasn't. You see, all we're seeing is the problem. And when all we're seeing is the problem, we've left no room for God. And we know that that is not the truth. And we are called on. We are encouraged to trust God. And when we do that, His peace overwhelms us. Because Psalm 46 verse 1 tells us that He is always with us in times of trouble. He is our refuge. He is our strength. He is always ready to help us in times of trouble. All we have to do is ask for help. With the Holy Spirit in us as God's children, we overflow with His presence. We have flowing out of us His power, His love, His peace. So much so that there can be no room in our life for worry to find a place to put down roots and grow into anxiety and fear. We should never allow it to happen. Perhaps to use very plain English. All worry, all fear, all anxiety, all trials and troubles that we could possibly face or have to live through have already been overcome and defeated for all of God's children. Gee, I thought that was worth an amen. Mm. Why? Because overwhelming victory is ours. Romans 8.37 says, Overwhelming victory is ours despite all these things through Christ who loves us. And yet the question still is, how do I live like this? <coughs> Jesus said in verse 33 uh, of our our scriptures today, we will have, even God's children, we will have trials and sorrows, tough times, struggles, disappointments in life. We are going to experience them. 
But Jesus has prepared an abundant life for us to live out. A life filled with his peace. Because we know and we believe that he has overcome the world. You know, I never find any promises in Scripture that say that being a child of God and, or become a child of God and life will be a breeze. <laughs> in fact, I, I think sometimes Christianity, sh Christianity should come with a warning label. You know, take care, trouble times ahead. But still, the benefits are out of this world. Yeah. Please take root of this promise that God makes for us, makes to us. I pray that this promise would take root and grow in all our life. It comes from 1 John 5 verse 4. Every child of God defeats this evil world. And we achieve victory through our faith. The disciples believed because Jesus spoke plainly. This scripture, I believe, is plain, clear English. Our response should be, yes, Lord, I believe. I believe I'm a child of God. I believe I have defeated this world and can live as an overcomer. You see, we have a vaccination against fear and anxiety and worry and distress that immunizes us completely with peace. There are no side effects to consider. We don't have to queue up for hours to get it. As soon as we accept Jesus as our Savior, we have his peace. And so we can trust Jesus. In the same way that Paul trusted Jesus when he said this in 2 Timothy 1 verse 12. That is why I'm suffering here in, peace, uh, here in prison. But I am not ashamed of it, for I know the one in whom I trust. And I am sure he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until the day of his return. Living a life filled with the peace of God is a trust issue. Paul, in his letter to Timothy, is still trusting God with his life. And the question is, can we do the same? Because every single one of us can live life completely filled to overflowing with the peace that comes from God. Because we are overcomers. We can and should live out as God's children in victory over whatever the world throws at us. We have the Holy Spirit in us guiding us to truth, empowering us to live as overcomers. And so we can live free from worry, anxiety, and fear about any situation, now and in the future. Amen. Before we sing the last song, Is there anyone, both here uh, in, in the church auditorium, in the hall, at home, who really you feeling that you are just being overwhelmed by what the world is throwing at you right at this moment in time? Your life situation has become such a burden uh, that you're at the end of your patience. You, you're at that place where you feel you're unable to cope anymore. Well, I believe God has uh, just a short word for you. He, he wants to enfold you in his love right now, this morning. He, he wants to, you to know that, that he's ordered this, your steps, that, that he knows what's coming ahead of you, that, that he's ensured that you can continue to live life peacefully, not full of worry and anxiety and fear. That all the answers that you don't have, he has. And he calls on you this morning, trust me, he says. Trust me. 
And so as we are seated here, uh, if that's you, if you hold out your hands just quietly in front of you, I want to pray with you. And Father, you know every single one of us. You know the desire, uh, the needs of our hearts. You know, Lord, every person who's sitting here who, who's indicated to you they need you right now. They need your peace. They need your presence. Uh, they need you to come and bring healing to their emotions, healing to their thoughts, Lord. Healing that, so that they get to that place where they are able to fully, completely, day by day, minute by minute, hour by hour, live out a life that reflects your peace, your joy, your strength. And so, Holy Spirit, right now, would your anointing be on them? Would you touch them right now, Lord? Thank you for your presence, Father. Thank you, Lord. Now, immediately after this final song, we want to pray for, for everyone who feels uh, that they, they need uh, prayer, they need to commun communicate with God. If you are not well, we believe God brings healing. Uh, there are marks on the floor here in the auditorium. For those in the hall, there will be people as well. There will be people standing in the front of this auditorium and in the hall. Uh, please make your way to them and allow them to pray with you. For those of you watching via the net, right? Uh, where there are two or more of you, pray with each other. Ask God to bring His blessing into your lives right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand as we sing the final song. The splendor of the King. A glory majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice. Trembles at his voice. How great is our love?